Each and every one of us falls somewhere in that spectrum between male and female. We've got absolute male, whatever that might be, absolute female, and then we've got people moving together, the androgynous ones, intersex. They're caught in between, and society cannot see them and judge them just for who they are. To be intersex is to be born um, physically such that it's not really possible to say this is a boy or this is a girl. It's taken as read, isn't it? The baby's born, is either a boy or a girl, an instantaneous decision. And increasingly these days, parents know that information before the baby's born. Well, you can imagine the distress that happens when a baby's born. You can't give that instant uh, information. Because my presentation at birth was ambiguous, it was decided that I would be brought up in a female role. Because that would be easier for me and it would be psychologically beneficial. So the decision was made that with some medical help, I would be raised as a girl. It's real. Get used to it. We exist. In the animal kingdom, hermaphrodites are not that rare, for instance, like the snail. And there's also a fish species that actually changes male to female at some point in their lives. Sexual preference is not really where, where it's at. The, the real focus is on the biology. Many are born with a variation towards one side of the spectrum or the other. They may have male genitalia, but internally they have ovaries or they may have ambiguous genitalia where you can't really tell what it is because everything is still inside of them. Male reproductive problems um, are extremely common, whether they present at birth or in a young man. And um, that's really sort of unexplained. Um, and I think what we've come to understand is that the process of making a male, what makes you and me, as opposed to us developing as female, is a process that's, if you like, bound to go wrong some of the time. So to become a female, that's the way the program is set to run, what we would call the setup program. As a fetus, you can become either sex. It just depends on the hormones. Hormones play critical roles at various stages in development of a male, but it's the effect in fetal life that is fundamentally important because that's, if you like, set in the stage. There are many, many departures from what is called the typical image we conjure up in our mind of what is a male and what is a female. I've counted around 40 or 50 different types of abnormalities in humans in the medical literature, each with a different name, a different syndrome for sexual development. If there is a blockage to an embryo and fetus developing into a male, and then something happens to stop that, then the presentation is not male, but equally it isn't female. Born Between will first explore a major scientific controversy. In 1965, twin boys were born in Winnipeg, Manitoba. During the circumcision of one of the boys, his whole penis was accidentally removed. Psychologist John Money thought he could solve the problem. The advice from John Money was, he can't be repaired, so from now on, bring this child up, not as your son, but as your daughter. And I will prove to you that nurturing can actually produce a healthy, happy girl, and she will not know anything about this. Dr. Money, it's still a pretty drastic procedure, isn't it? Well, it's a drastic procedure by, procedure by your standards and mine, but for the people who are living in desperation, uh, perhaps the best way to understand it is that it seems no more drastic to them than circumcision. Since the 1960s, generations of intersex children have been surgically reassigned to a sex that seems to be the easiest for surgery to achieve. Reproductive biologist Milton Diamond became deeply sceptical about money's claims that gender could be reassigned so easily. Dr. Diamond was, in the medical community, the only person that was disagreeing with Dr. Money 
when he specifically said, well, we can reassign kids at birth and we can turn them into whatever gender we want and it's not going to have any adverse consequences. Dr. Diamond was the person that said, no, that is not the case. Some years ago with a colleague, uh, Hazel Bay, I worked on uh, paper that uh, introduced intersexuality uh, to the medical uh, community. What we're talking about are the natural varieties of human condition. Nature loves variety. Unfortunately, society doesn't always do it. He spent 20 years finding those two boys that, that he tried to convert a male and turn them into a female and have them live their lives as a female. They were miserable. Both of them ended up committing suicide. When people talk about female genital mutilation, they usually apply it to these immigrants are doing this. All these people that live in places like Africa and India are doing this. I mean, this could never happen here, but it is happening here. It just has a different name. It's called surgical reassignment. Jay Hayes Light knows to his cost how medical misinformation can damage people's lives. And he now campaigns for intersex people. He himself was raised as a girl and sent to all girls schools from an early age. I used to join in with the boys as much as I could. I had a circle of male friends. And one day, one of this group came up to me and he said, we can't play with you anymore. Why not? He said, because you're a girl. Now I'd always been presented as a girl at school, but suddenly they'd reached the age where boys don't play with girls. And I was absolutely mortified. I was so angry that I actually battered this boy. I wasn't just angry with him, I was angry with myself, the position I was in. And after that, they left me alone. In South Africa, in a reversal of Jay's story, there's now a famous woman who started out as a man. I want to talk to you about someone I know as Sally. She was actually denied the opportunity to change her birth certificate and she had to fight for this, despite the fact that she was brought up as male and discovered later in life Having been ordained as a Catholic priest, she discovered when she had a health check done that internally she was female. She prayed about this and she finally decided she had to be honest. She had to tell her seniors what had happened. And she thought that the church would wrap its arms around her and say, we will support you. That's not what happened. If she was going to transition to female, she had to do it in secret. She couldn't identify who she was or what she did for a living. She couldn't be even be identified with the Catholic Church. And if she wished for any reason to attend church, she had to make personal contact with the bishop and get his permission every single time. So she was defrocked and she was just thrown out to the wolves. She had all the medical evidence to show that she was intersex, but she was told the only route to change the birth certificate in South Africa was to actually go through the same process as a trans person to do a real life test and to have surgery. And she's refused to have surgery and she's fought against this and finally she won. By being open about what I am and being prepared to confront just being myself and insisting on being myself by insisting that people encounter me as a human being and not some kind of label, one compels respect and people do come to understand. The way intersex people are treated by the law varies enormously from country to country. The most progressive government in terms of intersex and the issue of a third gender is actually the Australian government. The Australian government now has to where you don't have to classify yourself as a male or a female on your passport. You can put an X on your passport and that's a third gender. In the UK, a member of the House of Lords, Lord Stevenson of Balmacara, himself an intersex person, wants the law to be changed. I suffer from hyperspadias, which is not a very well-known condition affecting mainly boys, though it does affect girls as well. 
and uh, it, it's a, pro a problem that, that uh, probably now about one in 150, one in 200 boys are born with every year. And it causes immense distress and pain because it affects the, the penis and therefore it's something that's very private and difficult to talk about. If it's hard to grow up as a boy with a relatively minor problem like hyperspadia, how much harder if you're more fully intersex? I know of one person who was raised as a boy, who, who uh, went to a boys only school, participated in all sorts of activities that were very masculine, rugby, that sort of stuff, and then discovered during puberty that she was changing and she's now become absolutely clearly a, a woman and, and is trying to live her life there. We've got to have a different way of addressing this. I mean, and in some, some countries, I understand, they are beginning to move towards a recognition of intersex as being a perfectly legitimate label, which does describe what people have and doesn't require that birth certificates are changed or anything else is altered later in life, because at the appropriate time, the sex becomes obvious and the gender and the sex can be aligned. And that seems a very appropriate way of doing it if we can get there. Nepal is another country which has recently officially recognised that people can have an intermediate gender. But whatever the law states, many people find it hard to accept intersex people as they are. Motivated by her own situation, actress Sarah Lever has presented a play based on a famous French hermaphrodite, Herculine Barbin, exploring the difficulties of being neither one sex nor the other. Do good, me. My mum saved all her money for my schooling. I was right. Sarah herself felt like a boy from a very young age. Can you? What a charm. From as early as she can remember, she thought of herself as a boy. Her parents were supportive as she grew up. But the truth, hidden in her biology, came out only much later. I suppose the, the earliest I can remember is five, and I think from as far back as I can remember there, I definitely felt that I didn't feel that I was fully sort of female, but I never kind of saw it as anything particularly significant, I suppose, it just was what it was. I told everyone that I was a boy, and I used to go to the boys' toilets, um, but I don't remember the point when they found out that I was a girl and I don't remember it being a big issue, you know, I think it was something that they just accepted. And I suppose I looked like a little boy when I was kind of between five and ten. And so quite often if I went into the girls' toilets, people would say, oh, this, this is the girls' toilets or this is the girls' changing rooms. The kids just sort of accepted, um, whereas interestingly some of the teachers didn't. But I do remember getting to probably about 14, 13, 14 and suddenly I didn't like it anymore and I, be, I, w I was embarrassed by it. So I went to my doctor and I said to the doctor, I explained and I said, I, I, I just, I know this might sound a bit weird, but I just wonder if I'm, you know, intersex. And I suppose I was expecting a big, long kind of inquiry or whatever. And, and to my surprise, she, she looked in my notes that were in front of her and she said, oh yes, uh, it says here that you were born with a gonad. They removed the gonad when you were two. They did this test in your chromosomes, they found that you were female. I do feel very fortunate, I feel fortunate that I grew up with parents who didn't try to sort of change me. Uh, I'm married, <laughs> so I got married last November to a woman. Um, so I've kind of known that I, I was gay, I suppose, from about 19, so not really young. Probably I did know, but it didn't really come out until I was 19. I think that there is a difference between a, a male and, and female brain. I would feel as though probably everybody is involved in the grey area in between. The masculinisation programming window is somewhere in the range of 8 to 12, maybe 8 to 13 weeks of gestation. Masculinisation of the brain is beyond 27 weeks. We're not absolutely sure when all the events associated with brain masculinisation occur in humans, but they're late events. So you, you have a divorce between the two. They're both driven by the same hormones, but it shows that you can have a disconnect between the two. You can masculinize the reproductive tract, but not the brain or the other way around. If you had a deficiency in androgen production, either early or late in gestation. We found experts who can tell us about significant environmental factors which may be changing the proportion of intersex people born today. 
the animal kingdom, there's good evidence now that exposure to environmental chemicals can produce these changes. So, for example, even in the Arctic, where we tend to think that that hopefully is a pristine environment, unpolluted, even polar bears now are having sex changes due to exposure to chemicals. Is there any evidence that that happens in humans? So, for example, uh, undescended testes, where the testes don't uh, f uh, fall into the scrotum at birth. That's a relatively common condition. It occurs in about 5 to 6% of all boys at birth. We and others have shown that that has increased over the last 25, 30 years. Now, that's not a genetic thing. That's an environmental thing. And these are chemicals that, for example, that we use in everyday life, plasticizers, or the cling film you put on your food when you put it into the microwave. From a purely logical point of view, you would argue that probably the answer is yes, that some of these individuals are going to end up the way they are because of events that are non-genetic, that are events that are due to environmental lifestyle impacts. But whether or not factors in our environment are affecting pregnant women's embryos, there are large numbers of intersex people who grew that way quite naturally. Why make documentaries about this now? You are into territory for which, you know, we, most of us, can't relate in any informed way. Uh, and for these individuals, they, they must feel that in our society, which is set up as male and female, not for the, anything in between, that they are suddenly, you know, they don't fit in. When we deal with complex issues, um, we can, as scientists, approach these by teasing out piece by piece all the components of something very complex. And that's essential for the biological part. But there is no way, piece by piece, to take a complex social problem and tease out all the individual thoughts of a society that collectively makes a decision about what is male, what is female, what is gender, what are gender roles, what are appropriate, what are not appropriate, what sexual orientation, what is its relationship to homosexuality, heterosexuality, how do you classify an intersex? Are you going to ask the person to self-declare that they're male or female? What bathroom should they go into? What clothing should they wear? Can an intersex marry? Or are they forbidden because they're intersex to marry nobody? and live a celibate life to make other people happy because they have a dualism in their mind that there is only a male or a female and don't bother me with gene mutations and chromosomes and biology and nature. I don't care. I only want the truth, male or female, and keep it precise. That's a mistake. And getting that across, I think, is a major point I would love to see emphasised in your production. I think that uh, to make a documentary, a scientific documentary about intersex is a brilliant idea because I think that science itself is uh, so wonderfully vast and nature is so wonderfully vast. Our world is changing. We together, if we struggle and if we stand firm, can change it. Being a different person from all other people is actually not easy. It's very difficult. Trust me, I know. When I was in high school, like, my teachers actually told me, like, no, you're too different. You shouldn't be this way. God never made you like this, so you should try to be straight. There's no way you are going to, we're going to allow you being this. You're actually a sinner or something. So ever since then, I actually tried to change, but it never actually worked out. So today, I want to tell you to not ever make my mistake. Don't let anybody tell you who you are or who you should be. Mm -hmm.